Hey there, I'm Shelly Gray from ShellyGrayTeaching.com and welcome to this Lost in the Woods escape room tour. So if you've been following me for a while, you may have seen the Lost in the Woods escape room floating around the internet. If you've already purchased it, I hope that this video is going to serve as a helpful overview of all of the pieces that you'll need to prepare before you use this in your classroom. Now, if you've used escape rooms in your classroom before, you have probably have a good idea of how they work. If you haven't, just the very quick overview here is that your students are going to be completing tasks, obstacles, I call them in my escape rooms. Um, each obstacle is going to require them to maybe solve a puzzle, crack a code, something involved with, in this case, basic multiplication because the Lost in the Woods escape room is centered around basic multiplication facts. Um, now, when would you use this in your classroom? This is not intended as an activity that you would do while your students are learning their basic multiplication facts. This is intended as an activity that reinforces those facts once they've already been learned. So with that, I'm just going to switch cameras and give you a quick overview of exactly what uh, is included for each obstacle and exactly what your students are going to be doing. Okay, so let's go through a few of the materials here. Now, first of all, I'm going to apologize for the very low quality video. I always have these great intentions of doing these professional videos and it ends up being a low quality iPhone video on my kitchen table, <laughs> but that works. So first of all, here's the anticipation poster. Now this is what you can post in your room uh, the day before the escape room just to build anticipation with your students and make them wondering what is coming. Now this is to set the scene before you do your escape room. So this is the backstory to how you got lost in the woods. Now I'm not gonna read the entire thing here, uh, but you'll wanna read this before you begin the escape room just to set the scene for your students. Now, as I mentioned, um, this is an easy to implement escape room. All you need is manila envelopes, no lock boxes or anything like that. Now you'll need six envelopes per group uh, because there are six obstacles in this specific escape room. So obstacle number one is to build a fire, right? You're lost in the woods, you need to build a fire to warm up. So there's a little story here that your students will read. Then they um, read the task and read how they get their letter tile. So the letter tile um, is just something that they get when they complete the task. Once they get all six letter tiles, it spells a word for them. So in this obstacle number one, first of all, they have to put a puzzle together and the puzzle makes a bonfire. Now I'm not going to make it right now. Uh, but there's the pieces. So what they'll do is they'll put that entire puzzle together and then they'll write the products on the product sheet uh, from each piece on the puzzle. So that's obstacle number one. Now when they finish that, they come to you, you check their answers, and then if it's right, you give them a letter tile and envelope number two. Envelope number two, the obstacle here is to find shelter. So here's a little backstory about finding shelter. Now here is how we are going to tie this into multiplication. We're trying to figure out where you slept overnight. So to get the letter tile, in this case, your students have to come to you and tell you where they slept. Now to figure out where they slept, they're going to use this sheet of arrays and write the total number of dots in each array on this sheet and then the squared letters spell the code phrase, which I'm not going to reveal to you right now, but that is the answer to where they slept. So for example, number one is an array that shows uh, six rows of four, so they're gonna multiply that six times four and write 24 on the first line. Okay, so that's obstacle number two. Now, once they've completed that, you'll give them the next letter tiles, and then we're on to obstacle number three. The obstacle here is to cross the river. So there's a backstory there about an old rickety bridge that they see. Um, there's a code by the bridge and they think they better solve that code because it might say something important before they get on that old rickety bridge. So here is the code. So this is the secret code. And then there's a secret message written in the code letters. So your students are going to need to solve this code and they can do that here, solve the code, and then that's going to tell them exactly what to do on this bridge diagram. It's gonna tell them which boards to step on. So I'll give you a hint, this ties into multiplication because here they're going to be working with multiples. So that's obstacle number three. In obstacle number four, they are trying to get to the shack. So they know there's an old shack around here somewhere, and if, if you could just find the shack, you know your way home. That's the backstory. So we're trying to get to the shack. So in this obstacle, 
we are solving a maze. Oh, this one. <laughs> I just did this with a classroom this morning and actually I put one of the completed ones back in there accidentally. So anyways, they're going to solve the maze. Uh, the message that they're going to find throughout the maze um, says write six different equations with a product of 24. So they're going to write six different equations that have a product of 24. They bring you their completed task, you give them the next letter tile, and then you give them envelope number five. So envelope number five, the obstacle here is to find food. So it's been hours since you've last eaten, you're starving, you need to find some food. Um, now there's a couple berry trees nearby, but um, you're not sure which ones are poisonous, so you need to figure that out. Now in order to figure out which berries to eat, we need to put these equations in order from least product to greatest product. Now, obviously I'm not going to take the time to do that right now, but once we put the equations in order, we flip them over and it reveals a secret message that tells you the color of berries that you can eat. So I won't tell you that secret message yet either. Um, and then to get their letter tile, students just have to come to you and tell you um, the kind of berries that are okay to eat. And then they get their letter tile and then they get um, the envelope for obstacle number six, which is the final one. And that is to get home. So we're so close to home. Now we just need to make it the rest of the way. And in this obstacle, students have a map and um, how they are going to figure out how to get from the start to home is to follow the directions on these task cards. Now, I originally created these task cards intending them to be attached with a ring, like cut apart and attached on a ring, but quite honestly, it works just fine to leave them in a full page, laminate it for durability, and leave them just like this. So for example, three times eight is 24, so we find the answer 24, and that tells us to move 50 meters north so we're going to move 50 meters north on this map. And then number two, 10 times 10 is 100. So 100 says to move 20 meters west. So next we're going to go 20 meters west. And the route has to be exactly, um, well, there's a certain route that it has to be in that the directions tell you which way to go and how far. So that is obstacle number six. And once students complete that one, they are home. So they get the congratulations, you made it home certificate. Now I did want to show you um, also these oops cards. If you've purchased the escape room, you will have seen these. Now these are intended uh, when you have a group where one person's really dominating, or maybe you have a group that's way ahead of the other groups in your classroom and you want them to, you want to slow them down a little bit, you can give one student an oops card. So here, there's three options here. It says, oops, you made a wrong turn. You can't help your team for two minutes. Or oops, you got stung by a bee. You can't help your team for one minute. Or oops, you tripped on a log and twisted your ankle. You need to rest. You can't help your team for one minute. So personally, when I give these students or these cards to a student, I get them to take charge of timing themselves. Just look on the clock, give yourself a minute to sit out. And as soon as that minute's up, you are back in the game. So this, in a nutshell is the Lost in the Woods escape room. I'm just going to switch cameras one more time and give you a couple last minute tips. Okay, so before I go, I just wanna give you a couple last minute brief tips for running this escape room in your classroom. First things first, laminate everything you can, um, all of the cover pages for the envelopes, any of the contents that you don't need students to write on, laminate them and then they are good to go for many, many years. And really once you get the, the um, initial setup done, the copies that you'll have to make are very minimal because you just have to make copies of the few recording sheets that you'll need for each task. So not um, many copies at all. So that's tip number one. Uh, second tip is Okay, scaffolding in your classroom. So you are going to wanna to make sure that your groups are mixed ability because you don't want all of your strong students on one team and some of your weaker ones on another team. You wanna mix that up and make sure that there's some on each team that are you know, fairly strong with multiplication facts. And if there are students that struggle, that they are put with somebody who is a little bit more confident in that area. 
However, even if you do have mixed ability groups, you still might find that you need to scaffold with a few groups. Just help them out so that they don't get discouraged if they're falling behind everybody else. Um, so a few ways to do that. I mean, if you have some helpers in your classroom, that might be really beneficial. But uh, maybe somebody helps them just read the envelope, the, the front of the envelope, the little backstory. That can be nice just to have somebody else read that so that they don't get discouraged because it's taking so long to read that and they just want to get to the task. Um, another way that you can help them out is just honestly watch if they're getting discouraged or you find that they're moving really slow, uh, you find that their motivation is going. Just go over, like be enthusiastic, help them with a few tasks, get them caught up to where everybody else is, and then let them keep going on their own. So the main goal here is to keep them really engaged. Like you want your students to be loving this activity because there is a ton of learning. So if you can keep them having fun, then they are doing a pile of um, multiplication factor reinforcement without honestly really realizing it. Um, expectations. Now I just did want to touch on this for a second. Your expectations may change just depending on the dynamics of your classroom. So in the package, I, I, in my instructions, I say, you know, if they get the task wrong, they need to redo it. Now that might not always be the best approach depending on your classroom. Uh, maybe that's going to be too discouraging for one group. You just know that if you make them redo it, they're going to be unmotivated for the rest of the activity. Um, so, you know, let's let's talk about that puzzle obstacle. The very first one is um, putting together the bonfire puzzle. So that's actually a fairly tricky puzzle. Uh, some of the pieces are fairly similar, so it is tricky. So if you have a group or a team that puts together the puzzle improperly, let's say they mix up two pieces, are you going to have them redo it? I mean, maybe, it depends on the dynamics of your classroom, but maybe you notice that that group worked their tails off uh, putting it together. They got all of the equations, they still solved them, they still did the multiplication. Maybe they just didn't write the products in the right order. Um, is that a big deal? To me, probably not. I would probably not even tell them that they made a mistake and pass them on to obstacle two. That depends on your, um, on like I say, like I said before, on the dynamics of your classroom and on that team in particular. So remember, your expectations don't have to be written in stone. Uh, you can definitely be flexible with that. Um, multitasking. I did want to uh, just mention this as well. Something to keep in mind to mention to your students is to really encourage them so to multitask uh, with their team. So this is a teamwork activity. So it's a great way uh, for your students to learn how they can be more efficient with a team that they can just be by themselves. So let's talk about um, the arrays. Do you remember that task? Uh, I can't remember which obstacle, obstacle number two, I believe. Um, you have to find out how many dots are in that array and then write the number word. So uh, this morning I just worked with a classroom on this, on this escape room and um, one team, there were four kids, they were all counting the dots and figuring out how many dots were there by multiplying. And then they were all waiting for the one student to write the number word. So that's fine, that works. But is that the most efficient way to do this? No way. So um, I just went over to them and mentioned like, hey guys, if, if you two get solving the multiplication equations or get counting the dots uh, to solve the arrays or figure out the multiplication equation for the array and do the multiplying uh, while that one is writing, like you guys can be doing two things at one time. And that was actually like all they needed to really get in gear and get going. And so make sure you're reinforcing that teamwork aspect and how to work really effectively as a team member as well. Anyways, I think that is all that I wanted to mention to you. I hope this has answered a few of your questions or all of your questions about the Lost in the Woods escape room. If you do have any more, I've left my contact information below and feel free to ask a question through Teachers by Teachers or my website and or Instagram. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.